coming up on Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Because I forgive, I'm not saying that it's all right what they did. I'm not saying that that it can be excused what they did. I'm just saying I want to be free. I don't want to walk with this in my heart. And the third thing is this. Forgiveness is one of the most self-loving things you'll ever do. If you love yourself, forgive. It's about you. It's mostly about you. Forgiveness and forgiving him became so much less about him and more about me. And what I mean by that is I, the Father just kept putting on my heart saying, I've forgiven you so much in your life. How can you withhold forgiving him? When you put hate and anger and unforgiveness inside of you, it is the highest level of emotional consumer and it's 24 hours a day. And what happens after just a day or two or three of having that on the inside of you, your emotions begin to crater and you get depressed. And what your emotions are saying to you is, we can't keep up. We can't do this. We weren't designed to hate. Human beings were not created to be repositories for anger. We weren't. We weren't designed that way. So when we take long-term anger and unforgiveness and put it on the inside of us, we are ensuring ourselves major emotional problems in our lives. It's also spiritually, it's torment. And Jesus says here, you'll be turned over to tormentors. I believe that when we will not forgive a person, it exposes us to demonic torment. Now this is what Ephesians 4 says, verse 26. It says, be angry, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to diabolos. That's the word there, devil. It means slander. When There's nothing wrong with anger. Be angry. All of us get angry. It's inevitable that you're going to get angry. And there's nothing wrong with today's anger. But don't sin. Don't hit anybody. Don't, don't do something wrong. Don't be hateful. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. And if you do let the sun go down on your anger and you don't deal with that anger today, you're going to give an opening to diabolos. He's going to come into your life and slander your husband slander your wife, slander your friends, slander everybody in your life until he's divided all the relationships in your life. It is demonic torment. And so here's what I believe. When we walk in unforgiveness, we're walking out from under the protection of God. Hate is the devil's territory. And when you're walking in hate, you're on his turf and you can't cast the devil out of his own property. That's his property. Love is God's property. Forgiveness is God's property. When you're walking in forgiveness, you're walking under the covering of God. When you're walking in hate, you're walking out from under the covering of God. And that's why it's torture. It's because you're exposed to all of that demonic element that you're not when you're walking in love. Relationally and socially, division, racism, wars, violence, divorce, lawsuits. You can go on and on and on of the, of the ill that happens when we allow unforgiveness into our lives. It is torture. And that's what Jesus says. Here are three sayings that I like related to the issue of forgiveness. The first is this. The poison of unforgiveness damages the vessel it is stored in worse than anything you can spit it on. It's harming you more than anybody else. The person that you're mad at, the people that you're mad at, it's not hurting them nearly as much as it's hurting, hurting you. The second is forgiveness does not make them right. It just makes us free. Because I forgive, I'm not saying that it's all right what they did. I'm not saying that, that it can be excused what they did. I'm just saying I want to be free. I don't want to walk with this in my heart. And the third thing is this. Forgiveness is one of the most self-loving things you'll ever do. If you love yourself, forgive. It's about you. It's mostly about you in this issue of forgiveness. Well, let me talk about how to forgive from the heart. Number one, because this is a hard issue now. Everything I've said so far is just a technical, technical issue of here's what the Bible says and here's, here's what forgiveness means. Let's get it down to a hard issue. Okay. We must remember that our sins cost Jesus his life. Our sins. The most righteous man in the history of the world died the worst death in the history of the world, and you put him there. The Jews didn't put him there. The Romans didn't put him there. You put him there. I put him there. It's easy to be, sometimes, you know, sometimes the, the bad thing about unforgiveness is so much of the time we feel so good about it. We feel justified. 
And we look at what that person has done and we think, I would never do that. I would never do that. No. You're right. I might not do that. <laughs> but it doesn't mean I done, hadn't done a lot of other dumb stuff. I put Jesus on that cross. The hammer, the nails, the spear, the whip, the crown of thorns, the sign mocking the fact that he was king of the Jews. Jimmy Evans put all of them there, and that is the honest to God truth. And when I think in those terms, I get a little bit more humble about what other people have done. You put Jesus there. Don't you think you didn't? And let me put it in another way. For what you did to him, you owe a billion dollars to him. Just make it a trillion while you're at it. It's an amount that you couldn't pay the interest on. Ever, 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 ever. But he forgave you. And that's the truth. Our hearts have got to get soft and get humble before we start extending forgiveness to other people. And we have to begin by just simply saying, I might not have done that, but I did enough to put him on the cross. That's true. We put him there. Number two key to forgiving from the heart. We have to remember that God loves our offender as much as he loves us. So this is, this is really the, this is the offensive part kind of. You know, someone has done something horrible to us and we feel justified because we feel better than them. And you know, when someone does something and there are levels this morning as I'm, as I, and I'm, as I'm talking about this message, I know there are maybe people coming to your mind of people that maybe you need to forgive. There are the people that are frustrating. That's kind of the lowest level, just the frustrating people. They're kind of easy to forgive. They're just frustrating. Then there are the difficult people. They're, they're, they're not necessarily easy to forgive. They're difficult, but okay, I forgive them. They're just weird Uncle Harry, you know. He's just difficult. And then there are the painful people, the hurtful people. And, and a lot of them mean to be hurtful. And they're a particular challenge but then there are the devastating people. And this is the hardest, these are the hardest ones, the devastators. And I promise you that every one of you have had a devastator in your life. They did something, they said something, they didn't do something, and it devastated you. And you're sitting here thinking about the issue of forgiveness, and I'm sitting here saying, God loves them as much as he loves you. That's really where it gets offensive sometimes because it's like, no, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. And so we justify. We justify. We hate this group. We hate this group. We hate this person. We hate this person. And we put labels on them. And labels just mean now I have the, because you're a jerk and you're an idiot and you're this and you're that, now I, I justify hating you because you're not as important as me and you're not as special as me. Because I'm a born again Christian and we are the cherry on the top of the Sunday. <laughs> and God loves us more than everybody else. True? False. False. For God so loved the world, not America and not Christians. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever, 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 believes in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whoever, most of your New Testament was written by a man who killed Christians for a living. The apostle Paul killed Christians. The book of Acts records him as a murderer, watching the coats of those who are stoning Stephen, the deacon. And while they feared him and hated him, God loved him and was trying to save him. And our heart just has to soften up and understand, regardless of what they've done to us, they're still human beings in God's sight. And until they draw their last breath, he'll chase them to the gates of hell to try to get them to heaven. Number three step in forgiving from your heart. We must make a permanent release of their debt 
and release their judgment to God. And there's a better way to say it, and it's this. We have to disqualify ourselves as a judge. We just, we don't make good judges of people. And, and the reason that we don't is we see the behavior of people, but rarely do we know what they did, why they do what they did. I don't, I don't have enough information. And so he will judge. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. I'm putting judgment into his hands. And if there is judgment necessary, he'll do it, not me, because he's qualified. And I'm not qualified. Number four, step of forgiving from your heart. This is the big one. We must bless them and pray for them. Jesus says in Luke 6, 28, bless those who curse you, pray for those who spitefully use you. That's not just good little spiritual advice that heals your heart. And one of the main things that I hear from people, because again, I want to go back to the word devastate. The frustrators, the, the difficult people, the hurtful people, well, they're, they're an issue, but the devastators are the issue. And so many times I hear people say, Jimmy, I want to forgive, and I keep saying every day I forgive them, but the hate's still there, and I, and I feel bad about it. What do I do? I understand that. I'm, I'm not a hateful person, I don't believe. Um, but there have been two or three people in my life that I've hated. You have to work hard to get me to hate you, and they did. And um, I hated them. And it was oppressive. Just like I said, it was torment to be in that condition of hating somebody. But the healing of my emotions came as I prayed for them. God told me to pray for them, and it was offensive. And I didn't want to pray for them. Because it's like, Lord, I don't want you to bless them, and I can pray anything good that I... I want to pray, but I don't mean it. I want you to kill them. Their obituary is my happy thought. Hmm? But God, Jesus says, pray for them and bless them. Listen, if you can't pray for them, you haven't forgiven them. And if you can't pray for them, God knows you haven't gotten to your heart yet. Jesus, I'm, just not, I'm not asking you to go through some ritualistic type of performance-oriented forgiveness where you just say, oh, I forgive so-and-so and walk off and still have all your ill will. He's saying, from your heart, it's going to get down here or it's not going to work with me. Because he's a heart God. You pray for them. They may be dead. Mother, father, stepmother, stepfather, business partner, ex-spouse, whatever it might have been. And they devastated you, devastated you. They may be dead, it doesn't matter. You bless them until you get healed. Because when you start giving grace away, God will start giving grace into your heart. And as you pray for them, you'll be healed. This is when it gets down to the heart level. And this is how I changed. This is the people that I hated. This is when the hate stopped and, and truly love began. You know, you can overcome anything in life through the power of Christ. And that's what I love about Jesus is that when he comes into our lives, he, he empowers us for victory. It doesn't mean we'll never have to face a problem, but it means we can overcome our problems through the power of Jesus Christ. This Overcoming Life series, what you saw on today's program, is just a very small part of a full eight-part series called The Overcoming Life, talking about all different kinds of issues that we face and that we have to overcome in, in order to have a free and victorious life. And so we want to put the entire series into your hands right now for your gift of any amount to support us here at Marriage Today. We want to put into your hands the booklet, A Mindset Free. This will help you to overcome fear, worry, anxiety, sexual temptation is a big issue that I talk about in that booklet. And we want to give, give you that for our, your gift of any amount to support us here. And then for your gift of $45 or more, we want to put the full eight-part CD series along with the book, A Mindset Free. Again, it's what you heard today, plus that full teaching, then the other seven teachings as a part of that series for your gift now of $80 or more, the DVD series of The Overcoming Life, plus the booklet, A Mindset Free. We want you to have these full resources. Listen, this can, this can change your life. Uh, and somebody else, you may want to pass this along and bless somebody else, but right now we want you to get all of these resources, and here's how you can do it. Experience Jimmy's inspiring series, The Overcoming Life, on CD or DVD. We'll also include the book, A Mind Set Free. The CD series and book are yours for a gift of $45 or more. The DVD series and book for $80 or more. The Overcoming Life series will show you 
how to heal from the scars of rejection, why we compare ourselves to others, the key to dealing with discouragement, and so much more. Here's the truth, and that is you're either an overcomer or you're being overcome. There are many challenges in this life that all of us face on a daily basis, and we have to make the decision. I'm either going to be an overcomer or I'm going to be overcome. When you support Marriage Today with a gift of any amount, we'll send you the book, A Mind Set Free. Discover the joy of being an overcomer. Experience the series, The Overcoming Life Today. Today we're excited to have two very special guests with us, Chris and Cindy Beal. Several years ago, while serving in ministry, Chris became addicted to pornography and multiple affairs after that. After experiencing forgiveness and restoration, they're now helping other couples. Would you welcome with me Chris and Cindy Beal? Good to have you with us, Cindy, Chris, God bless you. It, your story is so fantastic, and we're talking about forgiveness, you know, dealing with unforgiveness uh, on this program today, and boy, did you guys have mm. some unforgiveness to deal with, mm -hmm. and Chris, you had multiple affairs, yes. and all of this, really, you found out in one day mm -hmm. about the pornography, about the affairs. There was a child mm -hmm. from one of the affairs mm -hmm. that you've really now taken as one of your own, mm -hmm. and so we, we want to talk to you about this issue of forgiveness. Karen, you want to? Yeah, you know, we're talking about forgiveness, and I know forgiveness, you, you, don't, you never feel like mm -hmm. forgiving. I mean, it's just not something, yeah. oh, I just, I think I'll forgive. Uh -huh. And so, you know, just talk about how you got past the feeling and just made that choice to forgive and how you walk that out. Well, that's exactly what I did. I did choose mm -hmm. to forgive him. And the amazing thing about it is as I started down that journey, forgiveness and forgiving him became so much less about him and more about me. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is I, the father just kept, putting on my heart saying, I've forgiven you so much in your life. How can you withhold forgiving him? Mm -hmm. Because we think that some sins are so much more worse than the others. Yeah. And really, we've all sinned. We've sure. all fallen exactly. short. And so as I began to see that I've sinned, I need forgiveness too. It was so much easier to forgive him. That was yeah, that was good. how it helped me. And it was just step by step and every it, day. You know, and, and like with forgiveness, uh, you, you made the decision to forgive, mm -hmm. but what about, you know, were there waves of unforgiveness? Were there times when you wanted to hit him upside the head or something? You know what I mean? In other words, that yeah. you would have your good moments. Were there yeah. bad moments? Yeah. Well, there were waves of pain. Yeah. I mean, and but I the thing I have to I had to remember is there came a day when I really knew in my heart I it's finished. I have forgiven mm -hmm. my husband. And so when those waves of pain would come, I had to remind myself that just because I'd hurt didn't mean I still didn't forgive him. Mm -hmm. People sometimes think, oh, you're hurting. You still, you need to forgive him. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that. Pain is a part of life. Sure. Yeah. We're humans. It's this true. is, when you were born, you're going to have pain, mm -hmm. period. Yeah. So That's good. Okay, another question. Chris, how does it make you feel hearing Cindy talk about mm -hmm. how she chose to forgive you? And how do you continue to increase Cindy's level of trust? Yeah. You know, she she is the most tangible example of, of Christ in my life, uh -huh. you know, uh, cause what she offered, I didn't deserve. Mm. And, um, she, not one time in nine years, uh, did she ever use what I did as ammunition against mm. me? That's pretty incredible. Not once, mm. not once. Um, and so, you know, watching her love me mm -hmm. after the, the darkness of my life and what I did to her and how I hurt her. Um, it was so monumental in allowing me to forgive mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you can imagine the, the self-hatred and the shame and all of that stuff that just oh, comes yeah. on you. Um, and, and so, you know, today, for the last nine years, we've been working really, really hard. Um, honestly, doing things we should have been doing all along. Everybody should be doing. You know, yeah. little things like... Um, I don't go one place to another mm -hmm. without her getting a call. If I'm mm -hmm. at church late at night setting up for something, I give my phone to one of my employees. They call mm -hmm. my wife, said, Chris has been here for two hours. He's about to come home. Mm -hmm. it just, I don't. Nothing is off limits to me. Nothing. Yeah. And so. Which is huge. Yeah. Computers. And healing. Yeah. Everything. It is. Yeah. And he doesn't get defensive. Not once in all these years has he ever gotten defensive when I said, hey, I struggled today. And let me tell you what I struggled with. Mm -hmm. And he'll be like, okay, well, let's, let me tell you where I was. Let me, you know, he just doesn't get defensive because yeah. he sees our life together as a gift that mm -hmm. he it's didn't deserve. 
Well, your your example, first of all, you were repentant. Mm-hmm. And it and it sure helps when you're forgiving when a person is repentant. And I know some cases they're they're not repentant, right. you have to forgive anyway. Sure. But when you were going through the worst of, of this, um, the devil tempted you and as soon as you sinned he condemned you. <laughs> right? Yes. And you were you were just like living in fear mm. of really coming out, weren't you? Just yeah. saying what was going on. Absolutely. It was um it was the worst nightmare that you kind of wake up and say, How did I get here? Mm-hmm. This was never a part of the plan. You know, mm-hmm. it was just one subtle, sinful mm-hmm. decision that leads to another one, leads to another one, and then you wake up and you're in bondage. And mm-hmm. I don't I don't mean to sin- sound passive. Right. I I I sinned. Mm-hmm. I, I broke God's heart. I broke my wife's heart. Um, but in the process of, of being honest and, you know, my goal was more than to restore marriage. I wanted to first be free because mm-hmm. I'd never known what that was like right. ever. And so, um, and you said that your pornography addiction started eight years, eight old. years old. Which is, I mean, I know a lot of men can relate to that, but I mean, this had been a lifelong deal. Yes, well, you, you're having to lie to yourself every day. Right. You know, you're constantly having to lie because you're living a life as a Christian right. and a yeah. pastor. And and I would submit that's really the bigger issue. Yeah. It, it could be pornography or it could be gambling mm-hmm. or it could be prescription medication. It could be anything, but it's the deception yeah, the lie. that right. that mm-hmm. that keeps you clouded into yeah. this constant cycle of yeah. uh, managing perceptions. Yeah. So you, you look free. Honestly, you, you do. Yeah. And, and you as a couple, you guys look, look happy. Yeah. Can you have one? Uh, yes. If someone believes that their spouse may be having an inappropriate relationship, what do you recommend for mm-hmm. them? I would say first pray for the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. to break their hearts. Yeah. Um, if, if Cindy would come up, have come up to me, um, in the years prior to mm-hmm. that day mm-hmm. where the Holy Spirit was just like, this is it. You're not living like this yeah. anymore. I would have lied yeah. because that's all I did. And I would have believed him right. because he's my he husband. You didn't, and you don't want to believe I didn't want to believe And he's my husband. I'm supposed to trust him. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I would pray and I would find other people to pray mm-hmm. that the Holy Spirit would put such a burden on that person to expose that which will be exposed sooner or later. Yes. Your right. sin yeah. will find you out <laughs> yeah. sooner or later. Yeah, absolutely. I would start there and then I would, I would pray for, for peace to look for an opportunity to bring it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, with, with your spouse. Confrontation. And You've got to confront eventually. At some point you have to pray mm-hmm. and then confront. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, Chris and Cindy are going to stay with us. We're going to come back right back with them. Powerful, powerful information. I know some of you can relate to this. Of being betrayed, of, of, you know, having your spouse, whether it was cheating on you or just betraying you and uh, destroying your trust. When we come back, uh, Cindy's going to talk just a minute about restoring the trust of the relationship. But, you know, we're able to come to you because of our partners, the people who stand with us financially. We have a very special group of people who support us every month. They're called our rock solid partners. We want you to become a rock solid partner. When you do, you get a special resource that only our partners get. And it's something that comes, it's the first and best of our marriage teachings. Uh, it's something you can use for your date night every month. It's continuing education in the area of your marriage that you can get on your iPhone, your iPad, your computer, delivered to your home, all different kinds of benefits that we offer for our partners. Here, here's how you can become a rock solid partner. Going through divorce is a lot to ask of children and often results in years of emotional pain. It's a violent ripping apart of their parents and a sense of abandonment. What sometimes we see as a quick way out can mean complete loss for a child. You have a 100% chance of success in marriage. You, You were made for marriage. Marriage Today exists to protect children from the pain of divorce and to steer couples away from marital failure by telling them the truth. When you stand with Marriage Today, your individual effort multiplies with other like-minded partners, and together we can rebuild a legacy of strong families around the world. Choose your level of partnership today and receive immediate access to the video streaming library. Become a rock solid partner today. We're here with Chris and Cindy Bill, and we're talking about the issue of forgiveness, you know, overcoming 
unforgiveness. What an incredible story you guys have. Uh, and Chris, you had multiple affairs. You, you came clean. You repented. And then Cindy, one day back in 2002, your world came falling mm -hmm. down. And uh, you found out about the affairs, but also eventually about a child yeah. uh, out of that. Now, you've written a book. Tell me the title of your book. It's called Healing Your Marriage When Trust is Broken. Really want to encourage people to get, and I know women, women and men, Mm -hmm. uh, when the trust has been broken, you been there, done that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And how, how do you rebuild trust? I mean, when you have forgiven and I mean, you're here because you've forgiven, mm -hmm. talk about the trust issue. Well, for him, it's, it's different for both of us because I have to let him rebuild the trust and he has to rebuild it. Mm -hmm. And for him, it was, he just laid everything out. He said, my life is truly not my own and I will do anything to prove to you that I'm you know, I am who I say I am. So he's done that all these years later. For me, it was truly putting my full trust in Christ because mm -hmm. he's the only one who won't let mm -hmm. me down. He will let me down again. Mm -hmm. Everyone on this earth will let me down at some point. Mm -hmm. And so I just had to come to the place where trusting in the Lord with all my heart was really where I live. And that's where mm -hmm. I live today. I do trust him. I trust him when he's walking in the spirit, when Jesus is truly right. coming I, I trust that man. You were about to lose everything, honestly, yeah. um, when you came clean. Mm. This is this is one of the pastors of the largest church in America, and uh, Life Church TV in Oklahoma City. You're the campus pastor there with Craig Rochelle. God has exalted you because you humbled yourself. Mm -hmm. And would would you say that to people who are maybe considering coming clean? And absolutely, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Brokenness is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And um, allowing the Lord to break your heart for the things that break right. His yeah. is the beginning of your life changing. Mm -hmm. And um, everything that I have is a gift. Every moment with this woman is a gift. And mm -hmm. honestly, my dream is to end my life not screwing up the best story I know. <laughs> that's that's the dream. Yeah. There's a lot of other cool things happening, but that's the dream. Yeah. And, and hope is real, and and it's in Christ. Well, that's what lasts the Absolutely. rest of our what, here life. What a phenomenal example from from tragedy, but how God has rebuilt your life, and how y'all made right decisions over and over again during this. I'm so sorry that we're out of time, but I want to encourage you to get Cindy's book. Thank you guys for being with us. You, you did a great job. We hope that this has been a blessing to you today and that wherever you are in your marriage, you'll just know there's hope. That's their story. There's always hope in God. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Subscribe to Marriage Today's YouTube channel for more marriage-building videos and updates.